Right, hi there. Uh, you're coming in this lesson, guys, with uh, we've just looked at the discriminant. What happens when we're looking for roots of a parabola? Uh, the discriminant being less than zero, then there's no real roots and it's floating above the x-axis or below the x-axis if it's a negative parabola. Uh, if the discriminant's equal to zero, then there's a one repeated root or real and equal roots. And if it's greater than zero, then there's two roots or real and distinct roots. Now, we're going to take that same sort of idea and apply it to, instead of finding roots, finding the points of intersection between, well, in this case, a curve and a line. Okay, now just as a starter, I'm just going to remind you how we find points of intersection between a curve and a line. Now, this is a simultaneous equation. You have to use simultaneous equations. And the easiest thing to do here to solve the simultaneous equation is say, right, I'll get both these equations equal to y. So these equations have to be equal to each other. So x squared minus 7x minus 4 is equal to 2x plus 6. We've got a quadratic equation. So one side factorize. So minus 9x minus 10, which factorizes to x minus 10, x plus 1 which means our solutions are x equals 10 and x equals negative 1. Now I'm looking for a point of intersection, so that's not good enough. I need my y-coordinate as well. Okay, I would use the y equals 2x plus 6, just because it's an easier one to use. So if x is 10, then y is going to be 2 tens add 6, so 2x6. And if x is negative 1, y is going to be 2 negatives, 1 add 6, so 4. So our two points are 10, 26, and negative 1, 4. Okay, now, similarly to our finding the roots, there's three different types of thing that can come from this quadratic equation we get when we've got it all to one side. Okay, we could get two answers. We could get uh, real and distinct answers, which would mean that the b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, but also, like in this case, we're going to get two points of intersection. So, line's going to cut our curve in two different places. We could also get no real roots from that quadratic. We could get it so there's no answers, okay, which means there is no points of intersection and the line just passes by the curve without ever touching it. Okay, and the last one, which is probably the most interesting, is you could get a real and equal roots or real and equal answers coming from a discriminant equal to zero which means you've got one point of contact okay which we know is called a tangent okay now what we're going to look at in the lesson that i'm talking about now is these conditions for tangency okay and it's very similar to the stuff we've done but related to curves and lines intersecting. Okay, now this screen here, I want you to copy down into your notes chart as a note. Okay, so pause the video now and do that. Right, thank you. Now you've got two examples I'm going to put into your notes as well. Now the first one here, prove that the line y equals 5x minus 2 is a tangent to the parabola, y equals 2x squared plus x, and find the point of intersection. Now, there's two steps to this equation. We have to prove, first of all, it's a tangent and then find the point of intersection. Okay, now there's two ways we can prove the ta that it's a tangent. I'm going to show you both, but there's only one way to find the point of intersection, and that's just actually what we've done uh, in that previous example. So to start it off, we have to uh, solve it or start solving it so we can get that quadratic that I had circled green in that first example we did. Okay, so 2x squared minus 4x plus 2 is equal to 0, which when I take out the common factor of 2, it gives me x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. So that's my quadratic, that's my, I'll call it a green quadratic at the minute, just because that's what I did last time. Okay, now if the line is a tangent, then that discriminant's got to be 0. Okay, so to prove that it's a tangent, I'm going to go to the side, and I'm going to find my discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac, well, that's equal to negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1. So 4 minus 4, 0. Okay, b squared minus 4ac equals 0. Therefore, real and, well, that's a beautiful, beautiful hand sign. Real and equal roots. And line is a tangent to the curve.
Okay, so that's me proved. There it's a tangent. So that's part one done. Okay. Part two is now to find the point on a section. That's just carrying on from there. So carrying on that solution. So this goes to x minus one, x minus one. Obviously, if it's a tangent, it should be real and equal roots. So repeated roots. So the same bracket. X equals one, x equals one. Okay. Then going back up, to find the y coordinate. Y. Well, it's going to be equal to five x minus two. So if x is one. Y is 5, 1 is minus 2, so Y is 3. So that's a point of intersection. Okay, now your other option for solving it is to go all the way down to here, uh, this line here, and then state because that there, that must be repeated roots, okay, or real and equal roots. So instead of having this, this bit in, what I can do is I replace that, I just go down to where well, x equals 1 and x equals 1, so that must mean it's real and equal roots, and the line is a tangent to the curve. So it's two different ways to show it, and what I would do is if I'm asked for the point of intersection anyway, you may as well carry on to this point here. You may as well, because you're going to have to do that anyway. And then if you get to that point, you say, right, well, okay, I've got x equals 1 twice, so that's a real and equal root, and therefore the line is a tangent to the curve and then just carry on and find the, the line. Okay, that's example one. That's a kind of bog standard one. I'm going to show you a more niche, a kind of more niche example. Uh, find the equation of the tangent to y equals x squared plus one that has gradient. Now, this one's a little bit trickier. Okay, so what we're going to do is, okay, I want to find the equation of the tangent to this line here that has a gradient of three. Okay, now if I know that I, if I know it has a gradient of three, then I know it's got to look something like that. Okay, y equals three x plus c because if I got a gradient of three, all I need to know then is the y-intercept, and I can get my equation. Okay, and so again, I'm going to start as if I'm solving it. So I'm going to say that x squared plus one is equal to three x plus c get it all to the one side, so I've got my, my green quadratic from before. It's 1 minus c is equal to 0. Now, if it's a tangent, and it does, it tells me it's a tangent, then I know the discriminant has to be 0. Okay, so now I'm going to start working with the discriminant. And it has to be 0. I can make that statement. I know that it's 0 because it's a tangent. So a is going to be 1, b is negative 3, and c is 1 minus c. So it's negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 minus c is equal to 0. Breaking out the brackets, that's 9. Minus 4 times a 1 will be minus 4. Minus 4 times a negative c will give me plus 4c. Right, so that's 5 plus 4c, so take the 5 to our side. And then divide by 4. c is negative 5 quarters. So going back up to my equation, y has to be 3x minus 5 quarters. So that's the equation of the tangent. And it all comes from that first step. That's the tricky bit there. That step there, saying y equals 3x plus c. That's something that is maybe a bit unusual. Now, that's all the stuff about tangency we're going to use with the discriminant. What I need you to do, particularly the guys that are missing these lessons, look at this, get the note, okay, when you come in, ask any questions you need to ask, and I'll give you some practice as well, okay, so cheers.